course, with anything, folks, you got to practice, 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 practice. Now, you've heard it said that practice makes perfect, right? Wrong. Tell you what practice does. Practice makes permanent. And that includes failure to practice. If you fail to practice something, you are making permanent incompetence. And you're making permanent imperfection. And you're probably not going to have a very good presentation to begin with. But what you practice makes permanent. See, if you have become practi if you have practiced brushing your teeth at night before you go to bed and before and brushing your teeth in the morning after breakfast and before you go to school or whatever, then you will eventually make that permanent. It might not be perfect because, you know, nobody else is perfect. We're not asking you to be perfect. Again, your, your teachers aren't asking you to be an expert. They're asking you to be an authority. They're expecting you to do this to the best of your ability, and that's all you can really ask for. But don't be afraid to practice things until they become permanent. You also want to use technology with this. Take advantage of some of these things. Like this little guy right here, he was using the technology of the time, which is called a mirror. One of the best feedback tools you can possibly have when you are presenting in front of a crowd is to look at yourself and see your just and right now that just about every computer that's out there has got a webcam all the iPods and iPhones and iPads and everything they have uh, video cameras and everything like that set those up and make a presentation in front of those and I'm not unless you're a glutton for punishment don't take those things out and post them on YouTube or anything like that. These are probably just for your consumption, for you to get some honest feedback, to look at some of maybe some of the distracting devices and ticks. Maybe you're looking up, maybe you're looking down, maybe you're staring at your note cards, all this kind of stuff. But use the technology that's out there. Don't be afraid to use that. Of course, if you delete that the instant that you watch it, that's cool, okay? But at least you've seen it. The next thing to do is maybe present this to other people, friends, family, the dog, Whatever the cat, I probably wouldn't recommend cats. They'd probably get up and walk out in the middle of it. But, you know, your dog will sit there and, oh, it's good. You know, but friends that you trust, okay, uh, and family members, make make some um, some actual live presentations too because you want to get a little bit of that. And make sure that you get feedback from these people, feedback from yourself, feedback from your, your family. The pets might be a little bit of a chore, but, you know, your friends and, and other people like that. Again, you're practicing this so that you're making it permanent. Well, if you practice things and you don't realize that you're doing some things like you are got some of these nervous tics, if you were somebody that does uh or um, one that I got to fight a lot is okay or again or you know, I've listened to people on radio. They have radio shows that they do for two or three hours out of the day. These are national radio shows, and I hear people going, you know, you know, you know, you know, and this is the host we're talking about, okay? So it's easy. It's easy. <laughs> I just did it right there. I just did the okay. It's easy to get some of these nervous things happening uh, vocally, but also, the, the, again, the, the kind of shifting from one leg to another because you're nervous or you're looking up at the ceiling or you're looking down or you got your your – your eyes locked onto your note cards or something like that, and you're afraid that if you take them off, they'll dissolve into nothingness or something like that. That's why you want to do this practice and get this good, honest feedback from either technology or families or friends or whatever so that you can eliminate these things. Because, again, if you're practicing them, you're going to make them permanent. All right? And so it's time to go live. Here's just some extra things that you can do. Speak slowly. Speak slowly, clearly, and conversationally. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not suggesting that you slow down so much. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. But when people get nervous, a lot of times they'll start to uh, they'll start to get a little jittery, and they'll start to get a little fast, and they start going a little faster, and a little faster, and a little faster. And a little faster right? Speak slowly. Practice speaking slowly, and talk conversationally as if you were talking to somebody. But you also want to do that so that you're clear. Remember, you're giving a presentation, but you don't have to be an announcer. But at the same time, it shouldn't be like, I saw this really good book and it was really cool. And I was, you know, somewhere in between those two might be a pretty good idea. Make eye contact. Always make eye contact. If you are so nervous that you're afraid that if you look at somebody, your head is going to explode, then fix a position in the back of the room and do it that way. If not, then. Maybe a few trusted friends that you can eye unlock eyes with. If you're really confident, try something called the three-second rule. That's when you, every three seconds or so, you 
make eye contact with somebody else and keep it for about three seconds. That's pretty comfortable. It keeps somebody from thinking that you're staring them down, but at the same time, your eyes aren't shifting around where they're getting this this uh, thought that you are not really prepared. Okay, but eye contact is important. You don't want to shove them in that nobody wants to see you read your book report. They want to actually see you. So make on that. Stay on topic. That'll keep you your your feelings from from going haywire. Is that again? The more you know your topic, the more confident you're going to be. You're not going to worry about your feelings so much. You got to remember that being nervous and being excited, as far as your body is concerned, is the same feeling. It's just your attitude towards it. And of course, smile. Have fun with this. It's not a death sentence. It's a five-minute book report. Even if you crash and burn, trust me, your classmates aren't going to forget about it in about 30 minutes' time. They have a very short attention span. What they're not going to forget is if you go up there and you blow them away for the next five minutes. So have some fun with it and make it a win-win situation for everybody. Generally, your, um, your audience wants you to win. They do. They want you to win. They, they're, they're pulling for you in most cases. And, of course, you want to win, so let's make that a situation like like that, okay? And we've got a couple of questions here that have been typed in since we've been doing this. Mark asks, how many visual aids should I include in my report? That's an excellent, excellent question right there. Because you don't want to get too much. You don't want to put 80 pictures out there where everybody's just looking at the pictures and not paying attention to you. At the same time, you don't want to be only the center of attention and not be able to plant a seed if you're going to use that and only use maybe one. Then they're going to get locked into that. Okay, you want there to be a good balance between those two. I would recommend maybe one visual aid for the introduction. The book might be a very excellent thing for that. Just hold up the book. Okay, maybe one or two, maybe three for your main points for the body of your thing, and maybe one for the conclusion. Again, you can do things like the setting, uh, maybe main characters if there's illustrations as far as that's concerned. That might not be a bad thing. To do that, so I would keep it. I would keep it to maybe about four or five, um, as a, as a pretty good standard. Robin writes in. I'm so I get so nervous when I make presentations. My voice shakes. What can I do about that? Well, again, I just said it before that the the physiological response between you being nervous and excited is the same thing as far as your body is concerned. So it's just a matter of attitude. It's just a matter of turning that around. Um, people that give presentations for a living or perform for a living, if they tell you that they're not nervous, they're, they're trying to sell you something. Everybody gets nervous, but good performers and good presenters take that nervous energy and turn it into excitement. All right. Other things you can do, just take a couple of deep breaths before you start. Again, one of the most things that you can do to make sure that you don't get too nervous and let that overtake you is you be, be prepared for this. Be prepared for it. And the most important thing I think you can do is you can practice performing. Every time you do something like this, you're going to get better at it. Even if you're somebody who sweats bullets and gets nervous and everything like that, you're going to get better with this as time goes along. Okay, well, that's just a quick sort of explanation of uh, some suggestions on how to do a good book report. I hope that... Um, I hope that that helps you a lot. Of course, if you have any questions, you know how to get in touch with me. But uh, those are those are pretty good points as far as that's concerned. Whenever that next book report comes around, try to follow those as much as possible. Be prepared. Have some fun with it. And remember, it's not the end of the world if you have a bad one. But And you learn a lot from those two as well. But that's basically it. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.